In this video, we're going to explore some ghost towns and abandoned places in northern Montana. Most of them along Highway 2, but some of these places are in remote locations. So let's begin. The first stop is going to be Kevin, Montana. There's still some residents who live here, but 1977, the refinery closed down. That's when this once prosperous town began to fade. There's a couple of really cool gas stations right on Main Street. Probably haven't been used in decades. And there's this old caboose by Great Northern Railway. And of course, there's going to be some abandoned houses. This old grain elevator looks like it's about to collapse any day now. Now we're going to pass through Shelby, Montana to get back onto Highway 2. We're going to check out the town of Devon, Montana. I think there's only one family who lives here still. I really like this Farmers Union Oil Company gas station. And there's a couple buildings right on Main Street. When you're visiting rural locations in Montana, some of the railroad crossings are not controlled. There's about 20 trains a day that pass on this line. So if you come to an uncontrolled railroad crossing, Look both ways. The next stop is Galata, Montana, and I probably said that wrong. This town seems to be a very popular ghost town. But I should also warn you, 10 years ago when I visited this town, a local landowner gladly pointed buildings out to me. This time, however, I was told to not trespass. I didn't enter the building, I was just standing on private property. It's probably turned into a little bit of nuisance for the landowners to keep having people enter their land. But if you stay right on Main Street, there's plenty to see. This was probably a grocery store. The next town is Joplin, Montana. It's definitely not a ghost town, but it's got a lot of really neat buildings to check out. This is the old grocery store. Over the years, this building probably hosted a whole bunch of different kinds of businesses. And pretty much every one of these towns we visit, you're going to come across the old cars and trucks. And there's the old gas station and auto repair service. Someone's still using this to store things. The only business that was open in town that I noticed was a restaurant and bar. And if you keep going to the other side of town, there's this old abandoned high school. I don't think it's been abandoned very long, but it's worth checking out. They may still use it for some civic activities. And on your way into town, don't forget to check out the sign. Next up is Inverness, Montana. Most of the towns on this route have these old grain elevators. Inverness has about three of them. Some are still in use, but most aren't. This town was pretty small, but it still had a couple old abandoned buildings to check out, including this old hardware store. and this gas station.
The next town is Rudyard, Montana. Definitely not a ghost town, but it's got some really neat places to visit, including the Sugar Shack. This looks like it's right out of the 50s. And if you go into town, they have a museum of these old vintage cars. I got here too early to visit. But I went behind a building and found a couple more to check out. This town is just fun to visit. I really enjoyed coming here. Main Street looks like typical small town Montana with an old movie theater as well. I'd really like to come back here one day to check out Sugar Shack and that museum. Now we're going to Hingman. It's another little small town. And there's the old truck like every town has. And the abandoned gas station. If you're from this town, can you tell me if that's a curling rink in the background? That looks like a curling rink. What I really like about this town though is that old high school. I don't think it's been used for decades. The town may still use it for some other activities, but I like that classic brick look. The next town is Guilford, but we're going to skip that and head north. We're going to visit the Milk River Valley Church. If you're going to drive here, ignore your GPS system. It's going to send you down a road most vehicles can't drive. Head north from Guilford to get to country road number 80. Then head east for a few miles and you'll see it. There's nothing else here except for this church and a building behind it. I'm not sure how long it's been abandoned for, but it's been a long time. If you're going to go out and check this former residence, be aware that there's a really scary abandoned well beside it. You definitely don't want to mess with that. To get here, you're going to have to drive down about 8 to 10 miles of gravel road. So if you're driving a Prius, it may not be a good idea. There's also a one-room school right off Highway 2. You can see it. But I will put the GPS locations for this and the church in the description below. We're going to pass through Haver, Montana now. This is the only real city on this trip. All of your services can be accessed here, and this is also where I spent the night. It's also a really fun town to hang out. Now we're going to go to Zurich, Montana. It's a very small town right off the highway. But here's the old grocery store and gas station. There's a couple buildings right down Main Street. But the one I like the most is this old bank that someone has converted into a garage. Like I mentioned earlier, most of these towns have these grain elevators, but the ones at Zurich, they just seem to look a little cool. This is also where I like to sit and watch trains sometimes. Next up is Harlem, Montana. This is actually a bit of a big town. But the last block on Main Street has a whole bunch of abandoned buildings. I don't think any of these buildings has a business that's still in operation anymore. The rest of the town itself is nice, but here you're going to see an abandoned car wash, movie theater, one of these buildings had a spa at one time, 
None of those buildings are occupied. But otherwise, really nice town. I'd actually live here. They probably got really good house prices. Now we're going to head north a bit and head to Hodgeland, Montana. When you're in this town, you're at the furthest point in the lower 48 from any of the top four major league sports teams. This place is that remote. It's got a church, a whole bunch of houses, and the roads are overgrown with grass and weeds. A lot of it's fenced off because it's private property, but you can get out and walk around as long as you stay on the roads. Just a little bit further east is Turner, Montana. This is the last town you're going to visit before you go to Canada. It's not really a ghost town either, but it's got some really cool buildings like this old motel. It's got three classic old grain elevators. I'm not sure what they're doing with this building, but it used to be a farm implement store. I'm not sure what that was, but it's probably a barber shop. And if you're here and you happen to see the Border Bar and Grill is open, I've been told by many people that's an excellent place to eat. Back on Highway 2, you're going to come across the Sacred Hearts Church on the Fort Belknap Indian Reservation. It looks like it's in the wrong place. This feels like it should be in like Arizona or something. Next up is Savoy, Montana. This ghost town isn't very big. It's got this really neat looking old bank vault though. But the draw is the old school. It is on private property and there's a fence that cuts you off, but you can easily shoot it from the road. There's a couple foundations from buildings that don't exist anymore. And I'm very curious as to what these two buildings are. They look like they're farm related, but I'm not sure for what. Probably for grain storage or something. Back on Highway 2, we're going to go to Dodson, Montana. There's two bars right on Main Street. This one has really amazing graffiti in the back. You've got to go check that out. The other one's the Cowboy Bar. If they would have called it Cowgirl Bar, Maybe it wouldn't have gone bankrupt. And like most of the other towns, it's got the grain elevator, the old vehicles, some storefronts. But the big draw to this town is that they still have the original pokey. I can't imagine being arrested and have to spend a couple nights in this place. Now we're going to head south about 45 minutes to a ghost town called Zortman, Montana. There is actually quite a lot of residents here still. And the motel still open, there's a restaurant and bar. But it's in the middle of the Little Rocky Mountains. There's a Rocky Mountain range right in the middle of nowhere, Montana. It's got a church, a couple of abandoned buildings, and it's got the old jailhouse. I talked to the lady who runs the motel, and she told me where the original jail is. So if you want to get that location, 
go see her or go to the restaurant. You can actually rent a really nice building up the hill from here as an Airbnb. One of these days, I'm going to spend a night in this town. Now back on Highway 2, we're going to go to Saco, Montana. You're greeted here with a couple of abandoned gas stations. And trucks. And right along Main Street, you're going to see a couple more abandoned buildings. But what I really like the most was this motel sign. This motel is no longer in operation. But at nighttime, they turn that light on. What a cute little town. Now we're going to go to Vandalia, Montana. I love this town for the school. What a unique looking building. And right beside it is this old wagon. This obviously used to be an antique store with pottery. And behind the gas station there's this really creepy swing set. I kind of like creepy swing sets. But the jackpot is the old gas station. I can't believe these old gas pumps were still here. I'm not sure how long they've been abandoned for. There's no one to ask. But it has to probably be since at least the 70s. And just down the road is Tampico, Montana. I think half this town is now a farming operation, so some of the buildings will be off limits. But right on Main Street, you're going to see this really cool twisted building. The winds in northern Montana can be pretty strong. That building looks like it used to be the gas station, but I'm not sure. Just a few miles from here, you're going to go down a paved road to the city of Glasgow. Lots of services here. That's where you get your gas. You got a McDonald's. But north of here is one of the coolest ghost towns I've ever been to called St. Marie. It's at the Glasgow Air Force Base, which was decommissioned in 1976. This place is so fantastic. I made an entire video just on this town alone. You can check it out on the link above. There's over 500 abandoned houses here, and there's two schools, a grocery store, a church, and more. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below. And have a fun, safe trip to Northern Montana.